Hey there, good morning. I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation. And again, we're coming to you today on Whetstone Conservation Area. As we're gonna be, this is a, oh, this is your habitat hint. Again, number two for today. We're gonna be talking about woodlands, all things woodlands. And I'm actually very lucky to have here with me MDC's Chris Noble, Newbold. And he's gonna tell us about woodlands and how using prescribed fire to help woodlands and so forth. So let me turn this around as we talk with Chris about what exactly is going on in the importance of our woodlands and how we can use those for cover and so forth. So here we go. Good af good morning, I would say to Chris. How are you today? Everything going well? I think so. You think so? Good, good. And you know, we're talking, we're talking woodlands and in the woodlands behind you and what we're standing in, what happened here? What, what's going on? What, what have you been working on in here? So this area we're looking at here, we put a prescribed fire in here in March. Um, so it's the first of June now, so we've basically had two months of growing season on this. And we put a fire in here to try to help control the understory, and really the main benefit is to generate herbaceous vegetation in the, in the understory. So what we're getting is a flush right now after that fire of a lot of our native lespedeses and desmodiums and things like that that produce a lot of insect, and then later in the year we'll produce good seed um, for things like turkey poult and other ground foraging birds. Um, it'll also kind of control the understory, and you do get some woodland species that like woodland bird species that like to use this type of habitat. Um, like as we go down the draw, you'll start to find Acadian flycatchers. I hear uh, rose-breasted grosbeaks singing out there using the, the using the canopy, um, things like that. So so it produces that type of woodland habitat with an overstory, good herbaceous vegetation in the understory, and then kind of a more sparse under uh, midstory that you get in that area, these areas. Now why? Mm. Why does prescribed fire help this? How does it help it? It basically removes the leaf litter that's in here and allows this flush of regrow of green vegetation that you see in here. If we were to come back in here without this fire, we would still see a, a big layer of leaf litter. Um, mm -hmm. That actually will create more mesic conditions. And so eventually, if you not, don't have fire in these oak woodland communities, they will start to change character over a long period of time to things like more like uh, sugar maples and and ironwood and things like that that don't produce as much hard mass um, and again produce even heavier leaf litter that just kind of feeds on that cycle making it wetter and, and, and more moist. How does the habitat here make it uh, after a prescribed fire how does it help uh, with uh, poults and turkey poults and, and other songbirds and so forth I know you kind of touched on that, but a little bit more. I mean, what does it? What does that ha have to do with using prescribed fire? How does that help it? Well, where you get a good fire, like we've got, where the site we're standing at right here, you have basically taken all the uh, leaf litter and, and other litter that was in here. So it has probably removed nesting cover for a year, but it's produced great brood rearing habitat because we got all this new green growing growth. We got bugs crawling all over us. Um, and again, that's where these, these hens can bring their poults through here. They can easily navigate. The poults can get through here. They can find bare ground. To find those insects is what, the, what they're really looking for this time of year. And then later in the year, they'll, be able, they'll change their diet, start feeding on seeds. And that's what these, these things like the legumes, all, all these native legumes that are yeah. growing in these woodlands are going to start producing that later in the year. Now, say I, I want to do something like this in my farm. Where can I get more information about doing prescribed fire on uh, woodlands like this? Uh, well, the Department of Conservation offers a lot of opportunities to train folks on how to use prescribed fire safely. Um, so I would look for uh, opportunities to attend a prescribed fire training in your part of neck of the woods. Um, and in all those areas, you're going to learn things like how to put good fire lines in, how to, how to set fires and keep them under control, and, and, and what to look for, what type of uh, weather conditions to, to burn in, and all that, all that information. All right. Uh, any more information, though, about using you know, your woodlands? I mean. And this is a big change. Like you said, if you didn't use prescribed fire, this stuff would be thick and full of uh, vegetation, uh, of leaf litter and so forth. But actually using it as a tool, it can really help. Um, a lot of landowners have questions about this a lot of times, and they can get more information, like you said, on, online. But what, what else would you like to share with them about, you know, and woodlands in general? I mean, why this is important to do that. I mean, you do it as a schedule. I mean, there are some places you don't burn, some places you do burn, like we talked about earlier. Um, how do you know when is a good time to burn? How do you know when it's not a good time to burn for the year? What side of the woods? On a lot of the areas we manage in this part of the world, historically they would have these these upland woodlands would have been uh, uh, would have been woodlands dominated by oak hickories, and fire would have played a role in that. So we try to put that fire back into that that system as best we can. 
Typically, we're trying to run a fire rotation on like a three to five year rotation. The longer you go, the more you develop this understory. I'm looking at this side here and I would like to actually see it a little bit thinner. And the way we're gonna do that is put fires more frequently in here. And then eventually we may end up having to come in and do some mechanical thinning with chainsaws to actually send, send some things out that the fires aren't gonna control. Um, but this is kind of like the, one of the first steps of getting back in here and putting fire back into this site. This site does have a fire history, but it's, it's kind of um, fire rotations are probably on a five to six year rotation, which is probably a little long to kind of maintain that real open woodland, woodland condition. The really cool thing about this is you say this was burned off in March and just look at all the great, you know, like the forbs, you were, I mean, just all the greenery at the back, like you were talking. The, you, yes, you're right, and again, uh, there's, there's plant species that are going to occur in these woodlands that help you define when you're standing in a woodland, and the more fire you put into those, uh, into those, those areas, you will start to see those plants starting to express themselves. We're standing right here on the edge, but right there looks like some big blue stem that's trying to you know, pop oh, up in yeah. the wood, and that's woods. And typically, if you had leaf litter and shade on top of that, 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 that plant is not going to be coming up in that area right there. Wow. Well, I appreciate it, Chris. Thank you very much for uh, telling us about, you know, woodlands and the importance of prescribed fire. And thank you all for tuning in. And again, you can get it, more information, like Chris said, on our website at mbc.mo.gov. And thank you again for tuning in this, uh, this morning on uh, your Habitat Hints, uh, number two for today. You have a great rest of the day. See you next time.